Here for a deployment to Iraq in the summer of 2006. Uh, as a Marine officer, I was in charge of eight Marines and a Navy corpsman. I was shot on October 18th of 2006 uh, by an enemy sniper. He shot me behind my left ear and it came out my face and uh, caused catastrophic damage along the way. Uh, later, the doctors were able to use bones from my legs and my hip to replace my upper and lower jaw. One of the things that um, after he got out of the hospital that, that I think he struggled with and his, his wife struggled with as well was when they would go out in public people would, would point or stare or, or, or at his face. So it takes a long time for the physical wounds to heal but there's also a huge mental aspect that goes on for a long time. I'm still dealing with that. One day they had an idea that you know what let's go to the store and we're gonna have a t-shirt made and it's just gonna say Iraq and back and we're, you're gonna wear that t-shirt next time you go out and that t-shirt changed his life. Well, I had the result of people coming up to me and talking to me and you know, asking about my appointment, saying thank you for your service, and just basically welcoming me home and telling me how important I was to them. Justin turned that into a business. He started a business called Iraq and Back, where he did corporate logo gear, shirts, polo shirts, hats, all that kind of stuff. But for him, it, it was that simple idea that he turned into a vocation. And it was one that was more than a vocation because it had personal meaning to him as well. The misconception for vets is that they can't do it, but they can. It's scary, it's uncertain, it's a new world for them to transition to, and a lot of times they're alone, but they can do it. The Entrepreneurship Bootcamp for Veterans with Disabilities is a program that was created to empower our generation of post-9-11 veterans through entrepreneurship. Well, EBV helped show me that I can do this. This is something I can do on my own, and I can, I can rise on my own merit or fall, fall on my own detriment. This particular uh, program puts them in a classroom of about 25 veterans and so they're with other veterans and that's very important to them. When you're in the service, when you're in combat, you're going through these transformational periods in your life and you have a team around you and when you go home sometimes you have nobody and it's very hard to fight a war by yourself. It's an opportunity for our veterans to live the American dream of business ownership, a dream that they put on a uniform to defend, so who better to live that dream than our military veterans. And so EVV helped prepare me to launch my first small business and with that came peace of mind and confidence and just really great excitement about going down that road. Now CNN's Sanjay Gupta on assignment for 60 Minutes. In January, Walmart pledged to hire any recent veteran who wanted a job. The company projects that could be 100,000 vets in the next five years. It's a big commitment at a time when it's needed. There are three million Americans who served in Iraq and Afghanistan, and they face a host of problems when they come home. It's not just unemployment. Nearly half have a disability because of their service. Most tragically, 
more soldiers killed themselves last year than died at the hands of the enemy. One veteran turned business school professor has an innovative solution to help them succeed as civilians. Give the vets a new mission, business ownership. Funded in part by Walmart, PepsiCo, and other companies, he started a small business incubator, tailor-made to help disabled vets trade in their combat boots for business suits. The story will continue in a moment. Vets like Staff Sergeant Brad Lang. He learned his sharpshooting skills courtesy of the U.S. Marine Corps. For his deployments in Afghanistan, this young father and husband volunteered for the bomb squad unit. Every time an IED is rendered safe, you saved countless lives. I joined the Marine Corps to serve, and this is, in my opinion, the ultimate way to serve is to, to save your brother's lives. These are the things everyone wants to avoid, and you guys are the guys that are actually going toward those things. Yes. In July 2011, while under fire, Lang defused two IEDs, but as he was leaving the scene, he missed one and triggered it. I remember the cloud of dust flying through the air upside down, landing on the ground. I knew that I was in pretty rough shape. When you surveyed your body, what did you see? I uh, noticed that my left leg was gone from the knee down. My right leg was gone from halfway down my um, shin. So my ankle, my foot, um, that was all gone. He was airlifted out, and weeks later, when he woke up at Walter Reed, the 27-year-old and his family faced their new reality. We got over the fact that I lost my legs very quickly, because no matter what, they're not coming back. So every conversation that we had after that point was, this is how you're going to recover. This is how you're going to continue to move forward as a productive member of society. I think it would take me a long time to get to that point. Everything becomes trivial when you go through uh, an experience like this. Brad Lang was awarded a Purple Heart and underwent more than 20 operations. During his months in the hospital, he reconnected with the Marine he had met during training, Johnny Morris, who had also lost a leg. Knowing their job prospects were slim, they decided to start a business, building guns, and also adapting them for the disabled. We both just love guns. Johnny was a gunsmith before he came in the Marine Corps. We just decided that that would be a great idea. We plan to be a retail gun store selling factory guns, full gunsmithing capabilities. He came up with a name. We were just kind of joking around and discussing, you know, what, what are we going to call this place? And my wife uh, looked at me and she goes, Stumpy's, duh. You only have one good leg between the two of you. <laughs> but they didn't know how to make Stumpies a reality. And that's where the Entrepreneurship Boot Camp for Veterans comes in. One thing I am gonna ask of you this week is make the most of this opportunity because- It's a crash course in business. In Everything from keeping the books to understanding the competitive landscape to getting financing. As far as I'm concerned, who better to live the American dream of business ownership than these men and women who have put on a uniform to defend that dream. Mike Haney, an Air Force vet turned entrepreneurship professor started the boot camp for veterans in 2006. It's a month-long online course, followed by a 10-day all-expenses-paid program that's offered on eight campuses nationwide, including this one at Syracuse University. You really treat them like, I mean, business executives. Yep. You take them out shopping for yep. suits and ties, they stay in hotels as opposed to dorms. Yep. What's the significance of that? I want to begin to help them change who they, who they perceive they are. You also have to create that new vision for, you know, I, I am an entrepreneur, I am a business owner. Marine Lance Corporal Garrett Anderson wanted to start a production company when he applied. While everyone in the class has a disability, Anderson's wounds are less visible. He's one of the approximately 600,000 vets suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. During the day, I could function. During the day, I could do my work. But night would come, and I'd just start drinking and watching. He was just 19 when he fought in Fallujah, one of the deadliest battles of the Iraq War. It haunted him. One night, I got pretty, pretty intoxicated. Later that night, I tried to hang myself. And 
Uh, I failed at that. And after I'd failed at that, I realized in a real way, like, hey, you didn't come home okay. You've got a problem and it's because of the war. More than 22 veterans kill themselves every day. That's almost one an hour. It's a crisis and, and everyone recognizes that it's a crisis. Has someone or something failed? Yeah, no question. I mean, it, it's, how do we let that happen? Is that, is that in part what, what drives you? I feel an obligation to support the men and women who, who have shouldered the burden of a, of a decade at war. They stepped up, they volunteered. How many of you in your military roles have had those people that you work for that are always coming up? Nearly half of those returning are coming home with disabilities, which can make it difficult to hold traditional nine to five jobs. Are veterans uh, particularly good at being entrepreneurs? Absolutely. You learn to become entrepreneurial in the context of serving in the military. The, the boss comes up to you and says, here's what we need you to accomplish. It's got to be done in two days. Figure it out. 70% of the vets who entered his program started a business within four years. Nine grads are running multi-million dollar businesses, including a technology company that had revenues of more than $40 million. Pam Randall didn't dare dream about that kind of success. I was shocked when I couldn't even get menial labor jobs. She was a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force and retired in 2010, after years of hard landings left her with a laundry list of ailments. Damage to both shoulders, both wrists, both hips, both knees, upper and lower back, and I have nerve damage in my elbows. That's a lot. Are you in pain? Every day. Though it was a challenge, she spent more than a year looking for work, any kind of work. 23 years of military service, a lieutenant colonel, a senior, senior rank, it seems like you would, you would be the perfect candidate for so many jobs. You'd think that. <laughs> you would think that. The military chapter's closed. Hmm. So now you do a new chapter. What was your sentiment as you're going through that? A year putting out applications and not being able to find anything? I was a little shocked. I had to do something, so now, you know, small business, here we come. Randa wanted to turn her leatherworking hobby into a saddle and tack business. She turned to the boot camp for help. I've got the craft side. It's that whole business world, all that business stuff that I knew absolutely nothing about. Randall, Lang, Anderson, and two dozen other vets were in this year's class. Early on in the program, most of them didn't see themselves as entrepreneurs. Just by show of hands, how many of you, before you joined the military, ever thought at some point in your life you'd start a business of your own? You thought you might? Yes. But you're the only one. Is it scary? Very. Yeah. What, what frightened you the most about this? Failure. Financial destitution. I mean, you, yeah. you do this wrong and you can mess up your whole life if you go too far too quick. Your credit's ruined, you know, you got a family and what are you gonna do? Failure seldom stops you to being an entrepreneur. What stops you is because you have the fear of failure and you don't- It's boot camp, minus the mud. The challenges are mental, not physical, and the vets lean on each other for support. You gel quickly when you're a vet. You have a common ground that you just, it's hard to explain what it is, but you just instantly will click. I think it would be difficult. I wouldn't want to do it unless it was a school of vets. There's VA assistance. We actually help you get your paperwork done. The final exam a is a presentation of their business plan to a panel of executives and entrepreneurs. Your presentation, you just inspire confidence. All right, thank you. I would like to introduce the 2012 Entrepreneurship Bootcamp for Veterans with Disabilities program here at Syracuse University. To date, only 600 veterans have gone through the program. It's numbers like that that frustrate Mike Haney. Sometimes I go home at night and I think about, man, there's 26 vets here. And there's 20,000 that will leave the military this month. It's spitting in the wind. There's, there's so much more we could do. This is something that 
the nation should be taking on, the, the U.S. government should be taking on. Agree 100%. I mean, there's a real sense of outrage, Mike, already that the government isn't doing enough for returning veterans. If the agenda is empower vets through business ownership, why would you not go out to the people who are really good at helping individuals launch and go businesses and, and say, become our partner? That's slowly starting to happen. The government, which already provides veterans with small business loans, has asked Haney to help design coursework for all returning troops. One of the most important parts of the program is the long-term access to mentorship, contacts, and a variety of free services. Ready? One, two, three. Yay! In the nine months since graduation, a few have already launched businesses. Thank you. Welcome. One opened a law firm. Make sure your quads, your glutes, and your abs. Another, a CrossFit gym. I'll just take about that much down. Pam Randall started Ladner's Leather Crafts and sold several horse halters. Go. Garrett Anderson started that production company, is finishing his first documentary, and he got married. You're taking a lot on this year, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you feel good about it all? Yeah, I feel great. Oh, there's that piece I was looking for. Brad Lang and Johnny Morris launched their gun business out of a shed in the backyard. After eight shots, the magazine ejects from the top. They got their federal firearms license, are looking for investors, and have already sold more than 100 guns. All right, I think I'm going to try this. All right, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, what, what? The new proprietors of Stumpy's gave me a lesson at a shooting range using one of their custom-made rifles. Safety's off. All right, you're clear to fire. Give this a go. You're clear to fire. Here we go. How'd I do? It looks like you hit. All right. Nice job. Nice. I just cashed or uh, deposited the first Stumpy's check uh, last week. Excellent. Like actual check that said Stumpy's custom guns on it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's neat. Pretty rewarding. Yeah. You take pictures of that stuff. You're like, yeah. <laughs>